Hey everybody, this is Matt with MattsMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today as we talk about circle graphs and how to make circle graphs accurately. We're in the Common Core Math Standard of Probability and Statistics. And our guiding question today is how can we analyze data by making a circle graph accurately? Now I'm sure you've made circle graphs in the past, but have you made them accurately? Definitely looking at how many degrees each of the sections would be. I know you've estimated it in the past before, but today we're going to actually look at how to do it accurately. Today we're going to be looking at samples using probability and figuring out how to create circle graphs. All right, so here's an example of a circle graph that I made asking students what their favorite academic class was. All right, social studies, 7 out of 36 students, 20% of them. Science, 1 out of 3 students, 33% of a third of them. 2 out of 9, 22%, and 1 out of 4, 25% was language arts. Thought there'd be more math, wouldn't you? Even though the math teacher was asking them, eh, that's all right. I see how science is a lot of fun. It's pretty cool. And same with language arts. All right, so let's figure out how do we make cool circle graphs like this. All right, let's do that. All right, now what we're going to do is we've learned about proportions, and now we're going to talk about how a circle, you all know that it has 360 degrees, right? We're going to talk about how to accurately draw those sections by looking at how many degrees that would be each of those sections would be, okay? So here's the steps to making a circle graph. Go ahead and start writing these down. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna total your data. All right, you gotta actually find and calculate your data. You gotta gather your numbers, okay? So here are some amusement parks from around the world, and these are the numbers that we might have of particular people. So go in and ask every other buddy and just say, hey, which was your favorite amusement park? Okay. Now what we're going to do is compare the data. All right. We're going to find the percent per each item. All right. So what you're going to do is take the amount that actually picked this one and divide it by the total number of students surveyed. All right. You're going to set it up as a fraction. So this fraction then becomes a decimal, and then we turn that decimal into a percent. Right. As opposed to like this one, we see how many students liked this guy, and you divide it by the total surveyed. And again, you're going to come up with a decimal, move the decimal places over twice, and that's your percent of that particular item. So for example, let's do this. Let's say you surveyed 14 people, and five of them love this amusement park. Well, what do you do? Put five over 14, that's it. And then you divide it out, all right, which is 0.36, and then again, you guys know how to move a decimal over to make a percent, move it over twice, multiply it by 100, because it's out of 100, and then it's 36%. So 36% of the people surveyed liked this amusement park the best. All right, so 36% of the circle should be filled in. Now, you need to do this for each category, okay? So compare all of those amusement parks and take them, put them over the amount surveyed and find the percentage, okay? Now what we're going to do, third step, is find the percentage of 360, 360 degrees. There's 360 degrees in a circle, and we're going to make a proportion now out of 360. So 36% of 360 degrees. Well, how do we do that? Well, we're going to set up a proportion. 36 is always out of 100, right? It's a percent, so we're going to always put 36 over 100. That's the easy one, the 100. And then the total is 360 degrees. If I was going to shade in 100% of the circle, how many degrees would I shade in? Well, I hope you said 360, because that's what's going to go on the bottom down there. So 360 degrees is the total. I want to find out how much 36% of 360 is. So now we've got a proportion. What do we do? Well, cross multiply, divide, and the other simpler way, if you want, if you see it this way, it's 0.36 times 360. 36% 36 of 360, 0.36 36 times 360, bam, that's your answer, okay? So what we're going to do for this amusement park is we would shade in 130 degrees, and we would label it with this amusement park, okay? We've done, we've cross multiplied, divided by 100, we get 130 degrees would be shaded in and labeled with this amusement park. And so now what we're going to do is we're just going to draw the sections. All right, you're going to use a protractor to draw each section. Start in the middle there. Always put your dot right in the middle. And then what I would recommend doing is putting a line 
straight up and down from the middle using your protractor and then estimating and using that protractor and figuring out exactly you have your example your protractor right there and then you know 130 degrees would be that's 90 so you know something like that so you'd have this would be shaded in with that amusement park and then you would label it does that make sense so then the next time you come in here and you want to do the next amusement park you would actually rotate your protractor and this now would be your starting line. Does that make sense? Okay, so now the next line, say the next one was 90%. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, or 90 degrees, and then we draw it here. And then we would shade it in there, and we would label that one for our particular music, amusement park, okay? Does that make sense? Not too difficult, huh? Get to use some protractors today, pretty cool. All right, there it is, five people, 36%. And now we're gonna get a chance to do it on our own, okay? So when we do it, just remember, if you start off with the percentages from the beginning, just set up a proportion to find out how many degrees there are. A lot of times you'll be given the percentages rather than the actual number surveyed. And then, bam, you're good to go. All you gotta do is do the proportion rather than doing the legwork of figuring out what percentage is per the amount surveyed. So for example, example here, kinds of pets. How many people have dogs only? Well, 40%. How many people have cats? 30%. Both 15 and neither. They hate animals 15%. All right? 15% of non-animal lovers out there. It's a shame. All right. So 40 over 100, X over 360, 30 over 100, X over 360, so forth. Continue to do that because we're starting off with a percent. Super easy. 40 out of 100. Cross, multiply, and divide, and that will give you the degrees. I could try to do it in here. And here's what it would look like if you make it all down. Kinds of pets amongst teachers. And 15%, 15%, cats only, dogs only. The degrees here, dogs was 144, cats was 108, both was 54, and so was neither. It was 54 as well, degrees. Okay, so that's how we used our protractor straight up and down. And then we draw, redrew 144, then we did our protractor again, did 108, and then 54 and 54, and we get a total of 360. Now we should have a total of 360 degrees, right? Everything should be filled in. If you're rounding, if you're getting some decimals in there, definitely round closer to the end, maybe even to the nearest hundredth. Rounding to the nearest tenth will get you there, but you might be having some uh, space left over at the end. All right. Make your own circle graph now if we're given some uh, students and they were surveyed. What was their favorite topping for their pizza? Well, six said pepperoni, six said sausage, three deluxe, and five, give me some cheese all day, baby. All right, so how many total students did we have? You got to add six plus six plus three plus five, and that's going to go on the bottom down there, okay? All right, why don't you see if you can come up with the decimals here? and the percentages for each of the students and their pizza topping. All right, did you get your percentages there for each of these? Now the total was 20, so it was out of 20 students, okay? So that made it actually fairly easy. Draw your circle graph now. You've got the percentages and the degrees. All right, and here's it should look something like this. All right, the percent was 30%, 30%, 15%, and 25%. The degrees were 108, 108, 54, and 90. Should have looked something like this when you're labeling it. Always want to have a title along here, student's favorite pizza topping. Want to make sure you label all of the sections and color them different colors. Get something like that. Okay, how you doing? Is everything going all right? Definitely use the proportions, and you could probably be given easier numbers. I mean, most of the time you're not going to be said, hey, there's 13 students surveyed or something like that. Uh, most of the work that you'll be working on, I bet, is going to be pretty easy numbers. But um, if it gets pretty hard and that decimal needs to be rounded, then, then do it. Uh, but know that it's probably going to be you know, 20 students, 50 students, 100 students, that kind of thing at first. All right. Why don't you make your own circle graph of these students surveyed and their favorite sport? Remember, first thing is you got to total up how many students were surveyed. Having trouble? 
Remember, put them over, so we take 8, put it over the total number of students surveyed, divide it out, get that decimal, and then turn it into a percent. And then you want to use that percent as 360, okay? Over 360, how much degrees in 360? All right, here's what you get. Graph should look something like this. You got a percent, you know, as a, written as a fraction, a quarter, three sixteenths, sixteenth, three sixteenths, and an eighth, and then here are the degrees for each of them, okay? All right. Well, that's pretty much it for today. Are you able to analyze data now by making a circle graph accurately? I bet you are. Go back and see if you need any help. And uh, that's going to be pretty much it for today. What was your favorite academic class? Where would you fit in? All right. Well, thanks for joining us. This is Matt with MathsMath.com. Check us out on Facebook at Solving Maths Problems or on Twitter at MathsMath. And enjoy math.